Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hip Horse. Tommy D along with Johnny Lowe. Welcome back to Derby Talk, episode number 10. We are on the trail for the Kentucky Derby, the Run for the Roses 148. Thanks for joining us. Johnny, how you doing, my man? Doing fantastic. It uh, looks like we're, we're seeing some 100-point races here. Uh, it's getting a little bit more exciting, and uh, we're getting a little bit closer to that big day. Exactly, Johnny. In this video, we're going to take a look at a few 100-point races. Uh, the UAE Derby in Dubai and the Louisiana Derby uh, down at the fairgrounds. We're also going to take a look at the Sunland Derby, 50-point uh, race also, 50, 20, 10, 5 there for that one. So three races we're going to take a look at this week on Derby Talk. Uh, once again, if you're new to the channel, please hit that like, subscribe. we got all kind of horse racing content. We are hot on the Kentucky Derby Trail. Uh, first, before we get into the uh, pedigree picks and uh, preview of the races, Johnny, let's take a quick look, recap of last week. Tampa Bay Derby, classic Causeway, jumps up to top uh, top one on the leaderboard with 66 points in that win. Uh, impressive or not to you, Johnny? No, that was not a... No. I, I, wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't classify that as an impressive win. Uh, he went out there and did what he needed to do. He beat a field of horses that... Uh, I'm, I'm glad that he beat. I'm sure the connections are more than proud of that horse. And if I owned the horse, I'd be I'd be glad to have a horse going to the starting gate. You know, keep him healthy and and just get him over there. But uh, I think this might be another year where you can mark off the calendar where the Tampa Bay Derby horse might not win the race. Uh, it's been a while since the Street Sense did it, but I I don't know. I. I'm going to have to see more out of him on, on Derby Day. There we go. Maybe not the strongest field, but Classic Causeway gets it done. Number one on the Derby leaderboard right now. Uh, above Epicenter, 64. Un Ojo, 54. Simplication, 54. And then Forbidden Kingdom and Morello tied there in the last spot there on the top five. Uh, Johnny, before we get on to the things, one more topic. A lot of people are probably interested to know about what's going on with Bob Baffert. Uh, what news do you have for everybody on the Bob Baffert situation? So Baffert, uh, he, he wanted a stay of his suspension, and uh, they, they took it to court to get a stay, and he, he lost the appeal. He's got one more shot. Uh, they're gonna, they, they, they've got the stay to April 4th now. He's going to take that shot before then. Uh, if nothing changes, then I would expect that, uh, that he's going to have to serve the suspension. And it looks like the Santa Anita Derby is April 9th. So he, would, he wouldn't have a runner in there. He's got no nominations for the Florida Derby. Uh, so maybe the Arkansas Derby could be his last big hurrah here before the, uh, before the Kentucky Derby. Um, if you're the owner of one of his horses that run in the Arkansas Derby, you're not going to get any Derby points. So that could be the big race for your, your Colt this year. Uh, he's got Pinehurst going in Dubai. If the, even if that horse wins, he's not going to get any points for the Derby. So... Uh, the, I, I don't know, maybe the connections are looking to cash in on those big purses in Dubai and then maybe uh, maybe give the horse a break. Yeah, I mean, Bob Baffert's still fighting at it, Johnny. I mean, I just don't think he's going to get it done there in Kentucky. Uh, but, you know, we'll find out. I think it's a pretty uh, long shot. What do you think the odds are? If there's no, the there's no shot. He has no odds. <laughs> no there's shot no, at all. You heard it here. The horses so. aren't getting in the game. No, it's not going to happen. So, you know, what if they switch to trainer? Do you think that could possibly work, possibly? They have to switch to trainer before the race. So if he has a horse that's going to run in the Arkansas Derby, even if Baffert's not suspended, if you own the horse... You might want to think about having somebody else run the horse in their name because if you don't get the points for that race, I mean, you're out. I mean, I, I don't really see another way. You'd have to come back really, really short, maybe run into Lexington, and hopefully if you win that race, it's enough points to get in and then come back on short notice again and run in the Derby. I, I, I just don't I don't see how that's going to work out. So, um, I guess we'll, we'll stay see. tuned to that, yeah. right? I mean, I, I, would, I would imagine some of those top Baffert horses probably are going to switch to somebody else. I mean... This is a once-in-a-lifetime, uh, you know, dream for a lot of horse owners to be in the gate of the Kentucky Derby, and you have your big shot, and Bob Baffert's not allowed there. So uh, I guess that would be uh, to be determined, but Bob Baffert not winning the appeal there. But enough of that. Let's get on to the three races that you're here to hear about. Uh, let's take a quick uh, at the Dubai uh, UAE Derby, 100 points, 40, 20, and 10. Million-dollar purse, so the money is there, Johnny. That's maybe why Bob Baffert going out there. 
uh, you know, in this race, you know, four four to seven post positions seem to be the stronger post in this. The wider posts are a little bit more troubling, especially with so many horses in the field. Uh, and a lot of front runners in past uh, coming off the race in the UAE Derby. Not many coming off the pace, but I'm going to let you take this one. There's a lot of horses in the field. I'm going to let Johnny do a little uh, pedigree breakdown on this one. Uh, what do you think, Johnny? Yeah, so looking at the American contingent, we've got uh, Gilded Age, who ran third in the winners. Uh, very unimpressive. We've got Doug O'Neill has his horse get back, Goldie, who... Uh, I mean, he's not he's not winning a race out here, so uh, a, a big Kentucky Derby type of race. So they've got him out there. I, I don't really know if um, it doesn't really stand out to me. And then we've got Pinehurst, the, the Baffert horse, that can earn Derby points, and he's he's bred to sprint. In my opinion, has never won a two turn race, only only one turn races. Um, so I'm just gonna take a few blind swings at at, at a, a few of the horses that are that are shipping in from out of the country. Uh, this one could be a long shot. He hasn't ran since last year, but his pedigree kind of interested me a little bit. And Lord, Lord help us! I'm gonna butcher this name, but I'm gonna give it a swing. Uh, it's Rewa Homer, Uh This horse is by Deep Brilliant, which is the Sunday Silence line out of Volens by Monju by Sadler's Wells. The absolute premier European lines and brings plenty of stamina. Femline leaves a little to desire. Uh, I will say that the top and the bottom line cross is what interested me the most. And I think that this horse has plenty for the for the, the distance that they're going here, which is almost a mile and a quarter. Um, I, I, I don't know if the horse is going to move forward from his two-year-old year to his three-year-old year. And I, I don't really know if he has a, the, the class for all these horses. But just from a sheer pedigree point, uh, he, he does have uh, show a little bit of interest for me. Yeah, I mean, you get top uh, international jockey, Christopher Lemaire gets the call. This is a top international rider, so you got to like that. 16-1, to the price. And the Japanese really coming along in horse racing, Johnny. Uh, who else you got for us? So, Candy Ride came over from Argentina. There was another horse gentleman. <clears throat> we haven't seen too many real Argentinian standouts, but uh, I'm going to try this Irwin horse here. So, Irwin is by Seek Again, who's by Spitestown. Might be a little short on top for the distance, but could could help be closer up uh, up to the pace. Uh, he's out of Irwina uh, by Orpin, who uh, is the Danzig line. He comes from the 2FM line, which does have a lot of stamina type stallions on it. Um, this horse has been running really well, grade ones down there. I, I don't know how that translates to what we're about to see, uh, but he does have a speed type stallion and he does have stamina on the bottom. Which could help him uh, play a play a more significant role towards towards being a pace factor, and maybe when they hit the turn for home, these other horses might have to catch him. Yeah, uh, AC Piera, top South American trainer, will have this one ready to go. He has two entries in here. Thirteen Irwin is the one Johnny is talking about. Uh, Johnny, you got any more here in the UAE Derby? Yeah, so uh, another horse that, uh, that that looks a little bit uh, like like he could do something is. Uh, Seki Fu. So th this horse ran second to Pinehurst last time in that one turn mile. It definitely looked like it took him a little while to get going, and I think he's going to like this extra turn in the stretch out. Uh, Seki Fu is by Henny Hughes, sire of Beholder, and hails from the Red Hot Stormcat line. He's out of Siyabona, who uh, who dropped Grade One Japanese winner Big Arthur, and has a nice femme line consisting of four straight black type mares. Broodmare Sire King Mambo brings a nice bit of stamina and firm ground footing with his Mr. Prospect Line uh, influence. I, I would expect this horse to be one of the wagering, maybe, maybe not the favorite, but but one of the, the more influential uh, foreign horses uh, in, the, in the wagering. Yeah, Johnny, taking a look at this race, what I love about it, you get horses from all over the world. It's an international event showing up at UAE Derby. UAE. Uh, in the UAE Derby in Dubai, uh, all trying to get some points for the Derby, man. You get this and you get in, Johnny. So uh, do you have some pedigree picks for him, or is this going to be a – how do we want to do this this week? I still have another horse I want to talk oh, about. Oh, one more. Sorry. I didn't, and there's what? How many horses in the field? There's I threw in four. There's 16, 16 horses, you know. I yeah, mean, pretty good. Hey, give him another one. you, you got some odds. We have give him some no prices, idea so. how these horses are going to run, so I figured I'd, I'd take an extra one. And the, the last one I've got here, and this would actually, I think, be my pick – is the Zor, uh, Zor Coast. Uh, he's by Street Sense out of Divine Rule by Empire Maker. He has a more common American pedigree. 
He has a, a femline full of black tie producers and should appreciate the stretch out with his running style. I would like to see uh, I'd like to see an outcross with the broodmare sire, but he might have enough juice from the Empire Maker line with that film line to keep that long stride going down the stretch. If you watch his last race, it might not have been the fastest race I've ever seen in history, but he did it easily. He's got a nice long, uh, I, I don't know if I want to throw this out there, but arrogant type type of a, of a stride where it's 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 long and lean and. And he really digs in. I think if there is a horse that's going to run him down down the stretch, if he does have uh, enough stamina to get that extra added distance, this horse could actually be a real player. And I, I think he might be my play depending on uh, what kind of odds I, I get on him. Yeah, that's Azuri Coast. Uh, three for three in Dubai, as you said. This on the street sense here. Trainer uh, Vashenko, the, you know, a very good option here at six to one, Johnny. So uh, that will be your top pick there, Azuri, Azuri Coast. That's the one I'm going to go with. And then uh, underneath, I I mean, you could blindfold me and I'll throw a couple darts at the board. I, I really don't know how this race is going to shoot. 16, I mean, this is like the Kentucky Derby of, of the Middle East at this point, you know. So I, I have no idea really how the race is going to shape up. And there's so many questions. I mean, we've got a maiden filly in there. I, I, I don't know, you know. But I think that's a horse that I would that I would have to put as my top pick. Yeah, Johnny, and it's sitting right in that spot. Like I said, you know, the post position four through seven usually in this race is where you want to be, not inside, not too far out. So paying attention to that, uh, something to, to look forward to. Enough of the UAE Derby. Let's move on to the next race we're going to talk about. This is going to be on Sunday, everybody. This is the Sunland Derby. This is a grade three, a mile and eighth, $5,000 purse from Sunland Park. Uh, like I said, Sunday, March 27th. Uh, let's take a quick look at the field, Johnny, and then we'll get to your pedigree preview and your picks. Uh, first, we have Costa Terra, fourth in its last start at Oaklawn. Steve Asimov trades this son to Gunrunner, finished ninth in the Southwest, fifth in the Breeders' Futurity. Last win came in July as a two-year-old. Owners is Windchill, Stables, uh, Thoroughbreds, strong, strong connections there. Uh, that's Costa Terra. Number two is going to be Classic Moment, another trained Steve Asmussen horse. Uh, Joel Rosario makes the trip after uh, riding in the Louisiana Derby on Saturday, so making the trip over there uh, to, on Sunday. Finished third in, uh, finishing third in its last at Sunland, improving numbers in its last three starts. That's Classic Moment. Uh, Fowler Blue, fourth in its last start in 100, uh, 100K from Sunland. So winning on the track before that, one by six lanes, optional claiming. Uh, Edwin Maldonado up all three starts, makes the trip. Louis Mendez, very good young trainer, uh, trains this three-year-old gelding. Uh, next will be Slow Down Eddie, made its 2022 debut in the Risen Star. Uh, finished six lengths back from the winner. All three races, a two-year-old impressive. A notable win in the Los Alamitos Futurity Grade 2. Doug O'Neill, Mario Gutierrez, obviously no stranger to the Kentucky Derby Trail. Uh, next we have Bye Bye Bobby. Second last start behind Straight Up G, who's also in this race. Trainer Todd uh, Fincher has a three-year-old has this three-year-old son to Quality Road, improving nicely. Uh, nice works on March 19th shows this colt should be ready to go. Uh, Pepper Spray won its first three career starts for Edward Kalux, uh, who is a 16% trainer. Last out finished uh, seventh versus some of the same horses here in the field. Regular rider back up in the saddle, 24% jockey trainer, 25 mounts. Uh, next is going to be Chrome King, one from off the pace last start, winning a 75K from Turf Paradise. Miguel Hernandez trains this three-year-old. 32% after uh, it won its last start here, so good numbers there. Lost to Pepper Spray multiple times, who also is running in this race, uh, who we talked to just before this. And the last one we'll talk about is Straight Up G. Won nicely in front speed fashion A lot of other who against a lot of others in this race. Richard Baltus trains this three-year-old Bay Colt. Won three out of five career starts. Ever since his first start, he got... The jitters out, and he's just looked like a new horse. Uh, Jockey Gonzalez won three out of four starts aboard. Richie Baltus has straight up G ready to go. That's the field of the Sunland Derby. Quick little preview. I'm going to hand it over to Johnny. He's going to give you some preview, uh, pedigree previews of some of these horses, and then we'll give you some pedigree picks. What do you say, Johnny? All right, yeah, so uh, with this race, I, 
I don't know if the I don't know if the pedigree is really the most important thing in the race. Um, it, it it's kind of uh, I, I don't think it hits that tier of uh, of racing where you know the pedigree is what's going to separate these horses at these distances. Although I, I did dive into a couple of pedigrees, so I've got two for you, and I think these are the the real contenders. Although I mean, anything can happen, obviously. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take a closer look at number two, Classic Moment. He's getting the addition of Joel Rosario. Uh, I, I think that's uh, that's a that's a really positive sign by Asmussen to put a Rosario on him and uh, bring him back at this mile and eighth, which I think the extra distance might help him a little bit. Uh, classic Moment is by Classic Empire out of Victory Party by Yankee Victor. Classic Empire won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile by a hard-fought head over Hot Stallion Not This Time. Like Not This Time, Classic Empire has a hot derby prospect in Morello, who is impressed in all three starts. Um, Victory Party is by Yankee Victor, who stems from the halo line that is responsible for breed shaping Sunday Silence and More Than Ready. The real juice here is on the fem line, though. Uh, Yankee Victor has five progeny to run, five winners. Second dam is Leslie's Lady, who dropped Beholder into Mischief in Mendelssohn. Uh, if you follow that fem line, that's 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 the real deal right there. There's there's no jokes about that. It's a it's a classic distance cross with Classic Empire over Yankee Victor. Um, I I think that this horse has got to improve off of his last race out there. I think that the extra eighth of a mile is going to help him out significantly, and uh, he should be fighting down the stretch. Yeah, Steve Asmussen training here. Like you said, Rosario making the trip. A big move here. Uh, like some of those names that you're saying there, Classic Empire winning the Breeders' Cup Juvenile pretty impressively, and some of the, the under that fem line you said, very strong there. Who else you got? And the other one's going to be the O'Neill Shipper. I think this is one of the more logical spots for him to, uh, to get this horse into the Kentucky Derby. It's Slow Down Andy. He's by Nyquist out of Edwina E. by uh, Square Eddie. Nyquist won the Derby himself and was the spark to lead the uh, momentum Uncle Mo got at stud. Nyquist's start at stud has uh, been all right. Ten of his top 15 earners have been fillies, and his top male progeny, Gretzky the Great, is a turf, uh, turf horse. Edwina E. never won a race in two tries, but she has dropped three foals, all winners, two black type. There's pretty good juice on the fem line as well, with two of the first five black type and four of them black type producers. Full sibling, Tim, uh, Team Merchants, is in a stake sprint earlier in the card. His only route win came on the turf. Um, I, like I said, I, I don't think it's the best pedigree for this, but the horse has beat some decent horses. I think this is the most logical spot for him, and, and I just, with the add, addition of the blinkers, uh, I think he should be right up there, and I think he's going to be pretty tough down the stretch. Yeah, 50 points to the winner. So, Doug O'Neill, maybe you might be on to something sneaking in there. Uh, slow dying Andy, 83 buyer, which was the highest of any other uh, horse in its last race. So, uh, something to pay attention to. That's the Sunland, Der the Sunland Derby uh, from Sunland Park. Uh, that's going to be 50, 20, 10, 5. It's a part of the Kentucky Derby Trail. Uh, now, so then move on to the big race that all of you probably been waiting for. It's the Louisiana Derby. I believe it's probably the biggest of the three. Uh, Dubai is international worldwide, but uh, here in the States, the Louisiana Derby is a big stepping stone here. And uh, I think it's going to be a good race. we got a nice little field, so let's get to it. Uh, before we do that, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, ring that bell. You're watching the Hip Horse, Tommy D, and Johnny Lowe on Track Talk uh, here. So uh, let's get to it. Um, you know who the last winner of uh, the Kentucky Derby was that came out of the Sunland Derby? No. Mind that bird. Wow. You know, I was going to say. You know where he, where he ran in the race? On the rail. <laughs> well, that was in the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> okay, okay. No, no, I didn't. No, where, where did he run? In the Sunland Derby, he ran fourth. So, obviously, the race was a lot tougher than the Kentucky Derby that year. Wow. Okay. All yeah. right. A little knowledge there for you. Didn't know that. Good to know. All right, uh, let's move on to the fairgrounds. What do you say, Johnny? Louisiana Derby? Let's do it. Yeah, mile and three sixteenths is going to be a Saturday, March 26th. Uh, another million dollar purse for three year olds. Uh, you know, this is the closing race of the day, race number 12. Uh, this race has been around since 1894. Uh, you know the first winner ever? In 1894. <laughs> No. Buckwa. I know you're a pedigree guy. I don't know. Buckwa was the first winner it. here ever, so I thought maybe you would throw a throw a bomb out there. But let's take a look at the field here. Uh, Silent Power stretching from seven furlongs. 
where he finished fourth in his last start. Trainer Scott Geiner uh, trained sprint route 17%, making that switch. Decent works. Uh, finished no better than fourth in its last six starts, so it's going to be an uphill battle. That silent power. Zozos, two for two. This Bay Colt won its last start at Oaklawn by 10 plus lengths. Uh, Son of Munnings broke its maiden win over the fairgrounds track. You got to like that trainer. Brad Cox, you know, has this one all ready to go. 24% in stakes races. Anytime Brad Cox is in a stakes race, you got to see it. He won this race in 2020 with Wells Bayou. Uh, Florent Giro was the jockey up aboard there. He will be up here. Uh, Call Me Midnight won the Lecomte Grade 3 from the fairgrounds in his first start as a three-year-old. Jockey James, James Graham, two for two aboard this three-year-old Colt. Keep the Sormo trains, this impress, uh, imp trains. Impressive win coming from off the pace at a big price, 28 to 1. That's to win the Lecomte and Call Me Midnight. Keep the Sormo, uh, Louisiana guy born there, but has never won this race. Would love to get it done. Curly Tail broke its maiden last start at... Uh, and made it special way going a mile and 16th. Trainer is Dallas Stewart. Hernandez takes the boot for the first time aboard. The son of Curlin. Uh, close from off the pace and it's only win. Uh, Dallas Stewart has won the race in 1999 with Kimber Light Pipe. Uh, Cobana, second by three lengths last out going a mile and a 16th at the fairgrounds. Uh, that's an optional claiming non-winners of one. Before that, broke its mating by five lengths at Oaklawn Park. Brett Calhoun is the trainer. Bullet Works had uh, did a five furlong workout in 59-1 over the fairgrounds track, so it's been working out locally. Trainer Brett Calhoun won the Louisiana Derby in 2019 with By My Standards. Jockey trainer combo, 33% at the fairgrounds. Pretty strong there, 54 mounts. Uh, let's move on to the next one on the field. Epicenter, number two on the Derby Point board, won the Risen Star by two and three, four links over the fairgrounds track. Uh, second in the clomp, just missing by a nose to Call Me Midnight, who also in this race. Steve Asuson trains his three-year-old Bay Colt. Son to not this time. Top rider Joel Rosario back in the saddle. This should be the speed of the re race. Steve Asuson has won this race three times. Pyro, 2008. 50 star in 2001 and most notable 2016 Gunrunner. Uh, next song on our list would be Pioneer of the Medina. Finished fourth in the Risen Star last start out. Stayed right behind Epicenter and lost ground and finished fourth. Uh, Todd Pletcher trains 21% in stakes races for Todd Pletcher. Jockey Tyler Gaffleon gets the call. It'll be his first time aboard this three-year-old Colt. Uh, should be close to the front in both of its wins. It was up there and should be close to the speed scenario. Todd Pletcher has won the race four times. He's the the, uh, the all-time trainer winner for this race. Last time he won it was in 2018 with Noble Indy. Uh, Galt lost its rider in the fall in a youth Galt stream. He was on the far outside post. Junior Alvarado, jockey, who broke its maiden, will get the call back. He finished fourth in the Holy Bowl after being part of the fast pace. Bill Mott trains this three-year-old. It was a $400,000 $400, purchase. Bill Mott has won this race two times, but it's been a while. He won it in 84, Taylor Special, in 91 with Richmond. Rattle and roll to close out the field here. Kenny McPeak trains this three-year-old Chestnut Colt. Son to connect, finished sixth in the Fountain Youth. First start of the 2022 season. Before that, won the Breeders' Maturity Grade 1 uh, at Keelan. Hernandez has been uh, has won two out of three starts for this three-year-old Colt. Uh, nice works on March 19th at Gulfstream Park. Kenny McPeak second off the layoff, 24%. McPeak has, did win the race one time in 2002. Repent, and it was ridden by a Hall of Famer, Jerry Bailey. There is a quick rundown of the field. Johnny, Louisiana Derby, let's get you to your magic and take a look at this pedigree. What do you say? All right, yeah, so <clears throat> I'm going to look at four horses here. One horse I don't actually like, but I want to break this pedigree down because I... I'm going to show you guys why I don't like him. Uh, he, he looks like he's he's going to get a, a, a lot of action. You know, although he's 8-1 to one morning line, I, I have a feeling that they're going to bet him down. It's a Brad Cox horse. This is going to be Zozo's. So Zozo's is by Munnings uh, out of Papa's Forest by Forestry. Munnings won four career races, all of which were sprints. He's never sired a horse that has run in the Kentucky Derby, and neither did his sire, Spice Town. I'm, I'm just not a huge fan of that. Uh, with Jack Christopher back on the work tab and a flashy victory 
uh, last out by Zozo's, this could be his best shot at getting a horse in the in the gate. So, I, I I think at this point Jack Christopher is a little bit behind the eight ball. He might he might be counting on this horse if he's going to have a horse that gets in this year. Papa's Forest was nine for thirty two with two hundred thirty three thousand in earnings. She was also a sprinter. She has dropped one other foal who is currently five for fifteen with one hundred eighteen thousand in earnings and a sprinter as well. Is a damn sire. Forestry has won the Derby with Nyquist. Um, and brings the Stormcat line uh, stamina that ha that this pedigree desperately needs to get the distance. Everything basically says that this horse is bred to be a sprinter. It won a mile in a 16th race last time by 10 lengths, an 11 horse field. Um, but we're we're gonna see if it wants to stretch out to a mile and eighth against uh, Stakes Company here. Yeah, or a mile and three sixteenths, I should say. Yeah, Zozo's uh, looking at the pedigree. <clears throat> uh, can't discount too many Brad Cox horses. Like I said, 24% stakes winner there. Uh, Johnny's taking a look at the pedigree there. He believes it's a sprinter. Uh, what else you got for us? Yeah, so then the, the next one we're going to look at is this uh, Sorma horse. Call me Midnight. Uh, he's by Midnight Loot out of Overseen by First Defense. Midnight Loot has sired two derby contenders in uh, My Loot, who ran fifth, and Sonneteer, who ran 16th. Yeah, he's by Derby winner Real Quiet. Although Midnight Loot was a sprinter, he sired all types. Uh, turf routing grade one winner Smooth Like Stray, grade one winning sprinter Shake It Up, and $7.5 million earner Midnight Bisu. Overseen was unraced in her career, but has dropped three of four winners, and the femline line behind her is heavy, heavily stocked with black type mares, led by Slightly Dangerous, who dropped nearly $3 million earners, Commander in Chief, and $1.5 million uh, Dushinator. Uh, 1.1 million dollar uh, earner and uh, warning who earned 930,000. There could be a possible distance limitation with top and bottom lines being both Mr. Prospect and Line Stallions. Um, the horse did win the last prep uh, in the in the Louisiana Derby uh, prep series, uh, but I, I think this might be a little taller hill to climb than the, the last one was. Yeah, you know, winning the Le Comp, like I said, big price, 28 to 1. Keith DeSormo, you know he would love to win this one uh, at home. That's Call Me Midnight. Uh, what else you got, Johnny? So, this is the horse that we picked for the uh, the last race down there. Uh, Epicenter. Epicenter is by Not This Time out of Silent Candy by Candy Ride. Not This Time has been making serious noise with his second crop. Led by Derby Trail standout Simplification and this horse Epicenter. Also on the trail, but longer shots to make the gate are Howling Time, Chasing Time, and In Due Time. Not This Time also hails from the Stormcat line responsible for Justify, Authentic, and Medina Spirit, or Mandaloon, whichever you consider the 2021 winner. Silent Candy was a black type turf router winning 5 of 19 and 182,000. Although she did well, the fem line is unremarkable, and she is the only black type on the line going back to 8th dam nearly in 1940. Candy Ride brings classic distance versatility on the bottom. This horse just had an amazing race last time, kind of got loose on the front end, and when they turned for home, you, you, you could see that they were not going to catch that horse. Uh, I think they're going to try the same strategy this time. Doesn't look like there's a terrible amount of speed in the race, and uh, I don't see a horse that can go heads up with them. Yeah, Steve Asmussen training and very impressive. I agree with you in the Risen Star uh, and over the fairgrounds track. So you got to like that coming into the race. Uh, you got top rider Joel Rosario. Steve Asmussen still trying to get his first Kentucky Derby win. Has a lot of wins, my friend. The most winning, winning, winning trainer of all time in North America. So uh, just doesn't have that big one. Epicenter might be one of his top choices uh, to get him there to, uh, this year. Uh, Johnny, uh, what else you got for us? And the last one is actually going to be my pick, and uh, we'll see if we'll see if he can hang with Epicenter just a little bit longer this time. I think they kind of let him slip away around the turn, and it was over. Uh, this is going to be Pioneer of Medina. He's by Pioneer of the Nile out of Lights uh, Lights of Medina by Escandarea. Pioneer of the Nile ran second in his Kentucky Derby and sired a winner, American Pharaoh, as well as fourth place finisher, Classic Empire, and 17th place, uh, Vince Ramos. Lights of Medina won 207, earning 173,000, and lost the <clears throat> lost the 62 Black Eyed Susan by by head the fem line. Oh, I'm sorry, lost a Grade Two Black Eyed Susan by head. Uh, the fem line is Chilean, uh, back to the early 1900s, and mostly unremarkable. Escandarea 
uh, makes a very nice compliment to the top line of Pioneer of the Nile, which could be considered a Mr. Prospector Stormcat Cross, which was also responsible for American Pharaoh and Classic Empire, uh, the best two he's ever had in the Derby. Um, I personally, I, I think that this horse has a classic distance pedigree, and I think that this is going to be an opportunity for it to show what it can do. I have a feeling Zozo's might go out with Epicenter and, uh, and push the pace a little bit, and then hopefully this horse sits right behind it, and we see if uh, it's got a little bit of punch in the stretch going this extra, this extra distance, and maybe you get a little bit of a price here. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Pioneer of the Medina needs to sit right off the pace, not too far back off Epicenter, but... Todd Pletcher, no stranger to winning this race, winning it four times. Uh, so I like it here. I think uh, you get Tyler Gaffley on up. Uh, he's getting the call here for the, uh, to be aboard this 3 year old Pioneer of Medina. Uh, so there it is. Johnny, anything else you want to say uh, about the Louisiana Derby or... Uh it, it, it looks like uh, it looks like the premier race this weekend, and I think uh, whoever comes out of it is going to be uh, probably at this point in the driver's seat for the Kentucky Derby until the uh, the next round of preps come around. Yeah, exactly. 140, 2010. So even that second place, uh, big points for the Louisiana Derby here. Uh, we're following the Kentucky Derby. 148, everybody. Kentucky Derby. 2022 we're pretty getting there close johnny uh once these big 100 point races coming in we know we're right around the corner you're watching derby talk tommy d and johnny low we appreciate you throw down in the comments who you like or anything you want to talk about throw down in there we'll try to get back to you we appreciate all the regulars uh throwing down your information in the mix uh we're hot on the derby trail anything else johnny you want to relay to everybody before we get out of here uh, I guess one more thing I will throw down. If if a bunch of horses do go out there and try to press Epicenter, uh, Rattle and Roll could be my, my long shot on the outside uh, to come swinging around late, although uh, the, the track doesn't fare that well for closers down there, but if it is a complete breakdown on the front end, I, I think that that horse might have a shot as well. Yeah, and you never know what's going to happen. We do know Epicenter most likely will be in front, and everyone's going to be trying to take Epicenter down. Uh, that's the Louisiana Derby, everyone. Once again, you're watching uh, Derby Talk on the Hip Horse. Tommy D, Johnny Lowe. Hit that like, subscribe, ring that bell. We'll catch you next time, everybody, here on the Hip Horse.